Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Smith. I'd like to discuss how cellulose works on cellulite. In order to do so, we need to back up a minute and discuss the anatomy of cellulite, and also discuss how this powerful technology works in my field of expertise, the foot and ankle. Cellulite is not simply caused by fat. It is a multifactorial problem. The connective tissue just below the skin runs perpendicular to the skin. This is the skin, and here's the connective tissue running perpendicular. Notice that the fat in this layer is separated into chambers by the connective tissue. Down deeper, we have the deep layer of fat just above the muscle. This deep layer of fat is affected by diet and exercise and can be reduced with liposuction. The superficial layer of fat, on the other hand, does not decrease with diet and exercise. It's primarily influenced by hormones. That's why cellulite occurs in average weight women and even very thin women, not just obese women. Also, liposuction cannot be performed in the superficial layer since it is just below the skin and contains blood supply to the skin. Destroying this layer of fat would devascularize and ultimately destroy the skin. The connective tissue running perpendicular to the skin is anchored to the skin at certain areas. You can think of connective tissue as somewhat like a rubber band. It should be strong and flexible. If this connective tissue loses its flexibility by becoming what we call fibrotic or hardened, it pulls down on the skin in the area to which it is anchored. This is what creates that dimpled appearance that's characteristic of cellulite. Furthermore, once the connective tissue has hardened, it disrupts the efficiency of the fluid exchange or circulation, specifically lymphatic drainage and microcirculation. Microcirculation is the term used to describe the tiny end branches of arteries and veins. The lymphatic system aids in the disposal of water, cells, proteins, and toxins in the tissue. With inefficient drainage of lymphatic fluids, additional fluid from the vessels is driven into the tissue due to simple osmosis. So with increased edema or fluid in the tissue chambers, we also get a bulging of the fat upward in addition to the pulling down of the skin at the connective tissue anchoring points, further worsening the appearance. Instead of the skin lying flat and even, it's being pushed and pulled into all sorts of abnormal positions. The increased tissue pressure from the high concentration of plasma proteins causes further fibrosing and hardening of the connective tissue, which causes further disruption of fluid exchange. So it becomes this vicious cycle that perpetuates itself and continues to worsen. You may have noticed that some spas offer cellulite massage and many of the current anti-cellulite medical devices combine some type of suction-like massage or rollers. The theory behind that is that this mechanical forcing of edema or fluid through the lymphatic and venous system is making up for that inefficiency. Does it work? It may temporarily decrease the amount of fluid in the tissue by improving the lymphatic drainage, but unfortunately, it doesn't solve the underlying problems, that hardened connective tissue and the inefficient microcirculation. So whatever mild improvement any of these massage type devices may achieve will be very short-lived. How does cellulose technology work? It works by correcting the underlying causes of cellulite. Through a process called angiogenesis, or growth of new arterial blood vessels deep within the tissue, that hardened connective tissue is able to repair itself. This is not instantaneous. It takes several weeks after treatment to begin this process and continues to improve over several months. Once the connective tissue regains some of its flexibility, it's no longer pulling down the skin and creating that dimpling effect. With more supple connective tissue, the lymphatic and venous systems are also better able to perform their tasks of draining fluids out of the tissue, which slightly slims the treated area as well. By the way, the reason men typically don't get cellulite is because they have much more extensive network of connective tissue in this layer. They also have thicker layer of dermis. That's the deeper layer of the skin. When this dermal layer is thinner, as it is in women, any type of imperfection, such as dimpling of the connective tissue and herniation of the fat tissue, is going to appear much more exaggerated. Unfortunately, this skin layer gets thinner and thinner as we age. The great news is that in addition to correcting the underlying causes of cellulite, cellulose also increases the content of collagen in this dermal layer of skin, 
further creating a smoother, more toned appearance and decreases some of the chemical content in the fat cells. I'm going to show you the medical research journal that discovered those facts later on. There are too many medical devices out there that make claims with no proof to back them up. This technology does have the research, so I definitely want to share that with you. This powerful acoustic wave is introduced through the skin. A coupling gel is used on the skin to do so. This is very different than ultrasound. This is a special type of acoustic wave known as a shock wave. Don't think of electric shock, it's not that either. This is a powerful type of sound wave that is actually used at a higher energy level to disintegrate kidney stones without making an incision. It's also used in all sorts of orthopedic conditions to heal painful tendons and ligaments. That's how it was actually discovered to get rid of cellulite. Physicians were treating women skiers with hip pain and all of the women were getting smoother buttocks on the treated side. I'm going to explain how that works in a minute. These improved properties aren't just subjective opinions of researchers looking at patients before and after treatment. Although certainly anyone looking at these pictures can appreciate the improvement. All these improvements are quantitative as well. In other words, scientifically measurable properties. You're looking at a graph from one medical study during which the subject's blood levels were analyzed for two chemicals that are known to be higher in individuals with cellulite. The scientists labeled these oxidative stress parameters. These values decreased significantly following six treatments of cellulose, represented by the graph at the top of the page. This is what I ref was referring to earlier when I mentioned that some of the content in the fat cells decreases after cellulose treatment. The researchers also used a medical device that measures biomechanical properties of the skin, and they found that the skin elasticity improved at the same rate after treatment with cellulose, as represented by the graph at the bottom. Here's another study. This one evaluated the effects of cellulose treatment on the dermal layer of the skin. You're looking at images of the skin from a dermal scan device. This is the dermal layer of the skin, and the black areas represent fat and lymphatic fluid. You can see that before treatment, the dermal layer is very discontinuous, and the fat is herniating into the dermis. After treatment, the dermis is much more compact, and the fat is now in its proper level beneath the dermis. And all that additional red and yellow represents new collagen fibrils, which is going to further improve upon that smoother appearance of the skin. The reason that I'm going into so much detail of how this technology works is because I want you to understand that this is real science. There are a lot of products and medical devices out there that claim to work on cellulite, and I want you to know that they don't. This isn't my own opinion. It's been revealed in reputable medical journals that some of the current technology being used to treat cellulite is simply ineffective. These companies are going to show you images and photos of models with airbrush skin or models that are too young to have ever had cellulite. What they won't show you is that medical literature because the cat's out of the bag there. The reason why I wanted to bring up how the technology we've been discussing is also very effective at healing painful tendons and ligaments is because we have so much research demonstrating the effectiveness. I always say that the proof is in the pudding, and from a medical research standpoint, that often means the histological studies. In other words, when a scientist takes a piece of tissue and looks at it under a microscope. Well, multiple studies have shown that treated tissue with this technology compared to untreated tissue has developed improved microcirculation. The tiny arteries we were talking about earlier that improve the blood flow to that deep connective tissue and that the treated tissue has regenerated or healed. The collagen fibers have become organized again. What do tendon studies have to do with cellulite? Well, the connective tissue just beneath the skin that is responsible for the appearance of cellulite, that tissue that I keep talking about, has the same cellular makeup as a tendon. It's all type one collagen. That's why it's so easy for me to recommend this technology. It's supported by medical research. It works and I've seen it work. I'll leave you with some additional before and after photos. I know you have a lot of questions and we're happy to answer them. Thanks for listening.